Okay, guys, we're just gonna finish off this question, okay? So this question, again, is still statistics. We just are going to look at D, okay? So it says a box and a whisker diagram is shown below. It says draw in the median on the diagram above so that the plot represents data that is skewed to the right or positively skewed. Now, you should know when we say positively skewed, that means that the median is below the average, right? Therefore, if we plot it on a box and whisker, our median should be sitting quite close to our lower, um, our lower quartile, Q1, right? So that's how you should plot it, right? Remember, positively skewed shows us it's this sort of distribution here, right? Where it's heavy towards the one side, right? And that one side being the right side, okay? Um, and that gives us this positively skewed um, characteristic that we're talking about. I'll do a little example just now, just give you a little bit more clarity. But let's go on to the next question. So it says the managing director of a sales department with 120 people gives an annual bonus to the top 40 performing individuals. So it's the top third, right? Because 40 over 120 is 1 over 3. So it's the top third performing, right? Explain why the annual average income of his staff is positively skewed. So what I've done is I've done a little, my, I've made up my own data set over here. So I said, imagine there's one person that earns one, one person that earns two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So there's eight people that earn um, eight or below. And then there's four people that earn well, 14, 15, 16, and 17, okay? So those are my 12 data points. So instead of saying 120, I just made it 12, okay? So I said my median here would be between six and seven, right? So that's going to be six and a half, okay? And my mean is going to be 8.167. You can put that in your calculator and test me, all right? But you can see that our mean is above the median, which is the characteristic of a positively skewed distribution. So the way that we're going to say this, right, is we're going to say the values of those to the right of the median, right? So basically from seven to 17, right? Are more spread out, thus the mean is pulled to the right of the median. So what we mean here, right? Do you see below the median, we have one to six. So the range there is, is between one and six. Whereas above the median, we the range is between seven and 10, which is a lot bigger. Do you see that? It's bigger than the difference between six and one, right? 17 minus seven is 10, right? And six minus one is only five. So we see that the range is so much bigger above the median, right? So you say the values of the right, the values to the right of the median are more spread out, right? And this pulls the mean, pulls the mean to the right of the median, okay? And we know that a mean that is to the right of the median is by definition a positively skewed distribution. So it's actually not an easy question, right? But it's just testing whether you understand how data sits within a distribution. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Let's just finish off this question now. So it says, you have a machine that cuts wooden poles into 10 meters lengths. You take a random sample of poles and measure their lengths in meters and calculate the standard deviation of the length to be 0, 0,8. Do you think the machine needs a service? Now, so we're saying standard deviation of 0 0.8. So we have 10, which should be our mean, right? So our standard deviation that way, right, if you add it on, is 10.8. And our standard deviation that way is 9.2, right? So, I mean, it's saying that, because remember, within these two standard deviations, you generally have like 65%, right? So 65% of your logs are sitting between those two. So I would say, yeah, like I think he does need a service, right? Because that is quite a big range to be having a large percentage of your logs between 9.2 and 10.8 and not closer to 10, right? That's what I would say. So I'd say yes, and I would say um, the machine, right, machine is inaccurate, right? It's inaccurate for like, it's inaccurate for like 65% of the time. Right, or maybe maybe don't say sixty five percent of the time. Just say the machine is inaccurate, right? And then you can say sixty five percent of the time it um, cuts logs. I just want to see if you can see what I'm saying. Oh goodness, you couldn't see that. Okay, so I said standard deviation is um, one standard deviation either side of ten is ten point eight to nine point two. I said yes, the machine is inaccurate, so it needs a service. It's inaccurate because sixty five percent of the time it cuts logs between. 9.2 and 
which is not not okay, right? It's um, not um, precise enough. Okay, so it's not precise enough, right? It actually needs a little bit of a service just to be calibrated so that it is closer to 10 more of the time. Okay, so it's just sort of like an understanding. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to continue with um, question seven, right? Just because I think let's just keep all the stats in these videos. So let's just quickly finish um, off our stats. Okay, so question seven says the diagram below shows the relationship between the time spent on an electronic device and the amount of... Um, the amount of time spent doing physical activity during the day, okay? So we can see that the trend is kind of downwards like this. So it's it's saying that time spent doing physical activity decreases when time spent on electronic device increases, okay? Which kind of makes sense because there's only so much time in a day, right? So it says, circle the correlation coefficient that best describes the data represented in the diagram. So we can see it's a negative correlation, right? Because as one increases, um, the other decreases, okay? So you see here, as this one increases, this one decreases. So we're looking at a negative correlation, so we know that we should be looking at that one or at that one. I'm going to say this one because it's not a perfect correlation. Negative one indicates it's perfect. It indicates that it all lies on the straight line. And as much as it kind of lies on a very similar trajectory, it doesn't all lie on a straight line. So I'm going to say that one there. Okay, let's now move on to B. So B says, if A and B were removed from the data set, so if these guys over here, right, if those guys were taken out, it says, from the data set above, what would happen to the correlation coefficient, right? So if you took those out, right, and those would kind of like mess your distribution up a little bit because they're outliers, right? What would it do? It would um, move uh, your correlation coefficient closer to negative 1. Okay, because it's going to become, it's not going to take account of these outliers and it's then going to calibrate itself more towards a strong correlation. Okay, then it says the gradients of the line of best fit. So how is the gradients of the line of best fit? Well, the gradients of the line of best fit, when it takes A and B into consideration, would kind of be a little bit skewed towards A and B. If you take A and B out, right, it's going to become a little bit steeper because it's only going to take these points into consideration when um, quantifying that relationship. So you could say that it would become steeper, steeper gradient. Okay, so this is kind of like, an, it's a very interesting way of testing statistics because it's actually more interested in your understanding than it is about your application. Okay, let's do three now. It says, circle the line below, which best describes the person represented by A. So A is kind of high on both of them. So they're quite active and they spend quite a lot of time on their, <laughs> on their laptop. So they all on their electronic device, right? They spend quite a lot of time on both of those things. So let's see. A person who has just bought an iPad and plays computer games. So computer games does not count as physical activity. So it's not that one. Okay. And then it says, a person who watches sport and television and likes to read books. Again, that doesn't indicate any physical activity. But then it says, a person who plays professional sport and studies via the internet. It would be that one because it means he's playing a lot of sport and then he's spending some time on his computer doing his studies, right? So it's going to be that one. Okay. It's basically asking you whether you can interpret a point on a graph. Okay. Let's now move on over here. Okay. We have another set of data. So it says, please refer to the information in the table below and answer the questions that follow. So we have two coffee shops and it's talking about how busy they are each day, right? And it talks about they have a mean. So they have the same mean, which is quite interesting, right? But their standard deviation is different. We don't know what M and P are. But we can see that um, coffee shop A is low and then high, whereas coffee shop B is more consistent. It's kind of fairly high every day, except for low on Sundays. Okay, so let's see what the question asks. So it says, explain why the standard deviation at coffee shop B is smaller than the standard deviation of coffee shop A. Okay, well, we know, right, that in coffee shop B, all of it is kind of round 
each other, right? It's all fairly high. Whereas coffee shop A, we have like a bunch of low and a bunch of high, right? And standard deviation talks about the distance away from the mean, right? So if you have data that's all over the place, your standard deviation is going to be high. Whereas for coffee shop B, all of our data points are kind of clustered together. So the standard deviation is not going to be very high. Okay, so the way you would put that is you say more of the data is closer to the mean for coffee shop B than for coffee shop A, right? So more data close to mean for coffee shop B than coffee shop A, okay? So you, and then you can say like, Coffee shop A has four low and three high, right? So you're just showing that it has very vastly different um, sort of uh, values depending on the day or values for busyness depending on the day. Okay, then it says for coffee shop A, right? If coffee shop A decides to sell coffee at a higher price on the weekends, then how would this affect the mean and standard deviation? Now, we see that coffee shop A is quite busy on the weekends, right? But if I increase my price, I'm probably going to sell less coffee or fewer coffees, right? Because it's more expensive. So people maybe just go somewhere else, okay? So these highs are probably going to become lower, right? And if they become lower, right, then our mean is going to decrease, but if they become lower, then more days are going to be low. So our standard deviation is also going to decrease, right? So both the mean, so mean would decrease, and our standard deviation would also decrease. So they're both going to decrease, but you should maybe stay here because the highs, the three highs, um, will become lower, right? Due to um, increased expense okay you can say you mean you can do the whole sort of economic um, explanation if you want saying as you know price increases your quantity demanded decreases but effectively what we're saying is those three highs will become lows okay let's do the last question for this question so it says what possible strategy could coffee shop b introduce so the mean and the standard deviation both increase both increase Okay, so what they could do is they could, so we want the mean and the standard deviation to increase, right? So what we could do is we could decrease prices, right? If you decrease price, um, so decrease price, okay, you're going to, if you decrease price, you're going to increase popularity, okay? Um... Uh, I think that's probably all right, but you should maybe only do that between Monday and Saturday, right? Because on Sunday, you have you have a low amount, right? You could probably sell it for less on Sunday, but for Monday and Saturday is where you kind of want to focus your energy because that's where you're really fairly high, right? So obviously on Sunday, like maybe the people in the area kind of don't drink coffee, right? So decrease your price and that increases popularity, right? Um, and that's pretty much what's going to happen, right? Because if you decrease your price, all of those fairly high should become slightly higher, right? So if you, if you, all those fairly high should become slightly higher. So that means your mean will increase. And then your standard deviation will also increase because you'll still have that low on the Sunday, right? So actually you mustn't, mustn't do anything to the Sunday because if you do something on the Sunday um, and it also increases, then you're not going to increase your standard deviation. And they've asked that the mean and the standard deviation increase. So we're going to focus on Monday to Saturday, decrease price, which increases popularity. So the mean will increase there. But now we have this low on Sunday and the bunch of highs the rest of the week. So our standard deviation will also increase. Okay. So a lot of this was interpretation, but I hope that was helpful. Stats is sometimes a tricky one, but actually really interesting. So we're done with stats for the paper. We're going to head back into geometry, but I hope that was helpful. Cheers.